Hello, everyone. This is Dave Berta, news editor at Foresight Health. Welcome to our How Healthcare Revolutionaries Think podcast, where we get inside the heads of people trying to change the current healthcare system. Our guest on today's show is Rebecca Orton. Orton is a nurse, a doula, and a small business owner. Orton is the owner, executive director, and office manager of the Astoria Birth Center in Astoria, Oregon. The birth center serves women with low-risk pregnancies, and it delivered about 200 babies last year. Oregon is one of six states that cover doula services as part of their Medicaid programs. The Astoria Birth Center accepts Medicaid patients, but Medicaid doesn't pay doulas enough to keep Orton herself off Medicaid. I interviewed Orton as part of our How Healthcare Revolutionaries Think series, and I asked her, how her experience as a Medicaid recipient shapes her view of the healthcare system and her work as a healthcare provider. Good morning. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? I am here, still kicking. All right, good for you, yeah. I mean, I'm very grateful for Medicaid, but I think it's really silly that I qualify for it. Right. Given what I do and the amount of work that I do. Mm-hmm. We're buying into this paradigm that birth centers are cheaper, midwives are cheaper, and the only person we're selling down the river is ourselves. Yeah, we're not paying our staff adequately. We're not adequately staffed. Mm-hmm. We're you know we're not paying ourselves, and then we feel happy at the end of the day because it's a spiritual calling, and we feel good right. doing a good thing. But like, and there's there's a lot tied up there with women's work historically just being totally mm-hmm. unvalued, devalued, undervalued, where. You know, historically, we're the stay-at-home parents, we're the judge, jury, and executioner, chief cook, and bottle washer, you name it, like right. all things, and we're used to not being paid for it. So let me, uh, so you you yourself have health insurance through the state's Medicaid program. I sure do. That's fascinating. My employees have a great plan through MODA. Okay, but you yourself are on Medicaid. Yeah. Okay. I made thirty thousand dollars last year. I qualify, and your entire family, your husband, children too, or yeah, okay, we qualify. Okay, yep. What perspective, being a Medicaid recipient, how does that shape how you think? Like, uh, oh, yeah, you know, private, you know, commercial insurance versus single payer versus government option. You know, all these things floating around. You know, how does that shape how you think? Like, do you embrace Medicaid? Do you think it stinks? Do you think we need a new system? Do you expand it? Can I say yes to all of those things? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes to all of those things. On paper, Medicaid looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. They have a mental health benefit. There's a chiropractic Mm -hmm. benefit, an acupuncture benefit. They cover naturopathic doctors. They cover Mm midwives. They cover home birth. So like on paper, that's what healthcare should be is focused on providers mm-hmm. who actually are delivering health and who are, yeah. are helping keep people out of the emergency room and keeping people, yeah. a, you know, a healthy BMI and managing their lives so that they don't yeah. need the medical system. Mm-hmm. And so the most effective providers are doing that are covered, which is great. The problem comes in when we say they're covered. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I first started working as a doula, I contacted state Medicaid and I was like, Hey, I'm a doula. I want to work in Oregon. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. The person I talked to, I said, so what's the reimbursement for, you know, two prenatal home visits, two postpartum home visits and a fully attended birth, which equates on average to about 40 hours worth of work per client. Mm -hmm. So that's a solid week. And they said $75. And I said, I I laughed because I, I really thought that like she was yanking my chain. And she said, Nope, that's not a joke. Wow. And I said, but that's like 40 hours of work that you're paying at $75. That's not even $2 an hour. It'd be better to work at McDonald's or to just like, and and forget childcare, forget all of it. And so when I say like the problem comes in with covered services, right, right, yeah, reimbursing for $75 for 40 hours of work is not feasible. Right. And that happens across the board. That happens to naturopathic doctors. I know because one works for me. It's better now, mm-hmm. but it happens to doulas. It happens to midwives. It, it certainly has been happening to birth centers. They hadn't raised the rates for 20 years prior to this mm-hmm. March 15th. I think they finally raised our rates. Yeah. 
Yeah. But wow. it took a lot of advocacy. We had to, there were, there were several people who had reached out and said, Hey, why are you paying us so badly before? And then I finally wrote this proposal with all of the math, some of what I have shared with you, and then other things that were much more concrete. Mm-hmm. I sent that out last September, got a meeting with them in December and said, here's all the data. Here's why you need to pay us what you're paying a hospital. You need to put us on mm-hmm. equal footing for equal services. Mm-hmm. And what you'll see is greater access to those services. Because rather than just struggling to stay alive, we'll be able to make a profit. And when you see that, then you'll see us expand. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And they said, oh yeah, you're right. Interesting. And I was a little floored that that was the response, but Mm -hmm. it was, they said, yeah, you're right. Okay, we're gonna try to pay you what we're paying hospitals then. And then um, three and a half months later, ish, three, three full months later, January, February, March. Yeah, three months later, They came back to us and said, well, we're not going to pay you what we're paying a hospital. We'll give you an increase, but we're not going to pay you what we're paying a hospital. And so we're currently asking why. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what are your actuaries saying that, that in light of the data we've provided that this isn't worth it to you? Got it. Got it. So that, I mean, you're getting the leading edge of the news. (laughs) That's as far as the story goes. Well, I just, I just think it's interesting to talk to a healthcare provider who yourself is a Medicaid recipient. Yeah. And I'm I'm wondering if, does that being a recipient yourself shape how you view others also on Medicaid? And absolutely. And is that something you think other providers should experience in order to, to, you know, you always read about disparities, right? I mean, how much time you get during a visit depends on your level of coverage, who, you know, your benefits, et cetera. That's an old, old story. But, you know, clinicians walking in the shoes of a Medicaid recipient could change a lot of things, change a lot of uh, opinions. Yeah. Yeah. To answer another question. Yes. I think everyone should have to do this. Yeah. No. Because you you call a facility and I, I want to be very clear that I've never had a healthcare provider, doctor, nurse, or otherwise treat me differently Okay, that I was able to perceive. Now, maybe I'm more sensitive to it mm-hmm. because I expected to be treated differently, but I have certainly been treated differently by facilities. Okay when I'm calling to try to make an appointment for my son mm-hmm. um, to get, you know, got to go to the dentist or, or, or to do this thing or this other thing. There's a bunch of places that, Oh, we're full for Medicaid. Oh, okay. And so you're going to have to go to this other clinic. So I find that the caliber of clinic often changes mm-hmm. because you find places that because they're a rural health clinic or a federally qualified rural health clinic, they can't turn down Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Other places can. And so I've been turned down for service before, certainly. And I've definitely heard it's it's hard to quantify. Mm -hmm. And I don't like things that are hard to quantify, but it is kind of a change in tone. Yeah. Yeah. They said, oh, 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 this is Medicaid. Oh, right. They already know it. We're not going to make any money off of this. We're going to try to get you as quickly as possible. And I've, I have actually, now that I think about it, I did have one doctor say, so we're talking about my kid has weird teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just crooked. And they knew I was on Medicaid and said, well, I would recommend braces, but you probably can't afford them. Ah, uh, yeah. Your insurance won't cover it. And I thought, how rude. <laughs> right, right. That's a big assumption. Uninformed assumption. Yeah. But he probably wasn't wrong either. Mm-hmm. But that does change what his medical recommendation would be based on knowing what our insurance would cut. Wow. When my kid needs braces, I'm just going to need them. But that doctor knew yeah. because of where our income had to have been right. in order to qualify. And, and knowing what our insurance would cover, like, I can't really recommend this because it's just not feasible for you. Wow. It's an interesting, interesting perspective and experience. And I'm sure that's in your head as you treat your own patients and work with patients. You're very conscious of that yeah. experience. And it probably shows in how you treat them, right? Yeah. And people don't like to say that they're on Medicaid. There is a social stigma because I've talked I've talked to people just coming from the advocacy, mm-hmm. like I'm calling on your insurance claim. I've talked to people in Medicaid who have said that Medicaid beneficiaries are like a leech on the system. I've heard those words like said to me. And, and so I've had clients come to me and they don't like saying, oh, I'm on Medicaid. They'll say I have Oregon health plan. They'll say I have CPCCO. They'll say I have care Oregon. No one wants to say they have Medicaid. I don't even like saying it. I mean, I'm being very honest with you, but when I'm around anyone else, I I don't tout that fact, but I'll say that to my clients. Like I do, I say this Mm -hmm. a lot. So anyone who knows, knows I say this a lot. The only thing 
that it means to me when I hear that you have Medicaid is that you are not swimming in money. That's all. right. It has nothing to do with your level of education. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with your goodness mm-hmm. or your moral value to society or how good of a parent you are. It just says you're not swimming in money. Right, right. That's a great perspective. Well, Rebecca, this has been great. I really appreciate your time and your candor, and I think it's going to make a great story. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Great job. Great job. Uh-huh. Well, it's, it's good to talk to you. You're a great interviewer. Oh, well, hey, you have great stories, right? You just, <laughs> right. stuff writes itself sometimes, right? Right, yeah. All right, thanks, Rebecca. Very nice to meet you. You too, Dave. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you'd like to learn more about how Orton thinks, please read our Q&A with her on ForesightHealth.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Dave Berta for Foresight Health.